um, a very good morning to you all. Let's uh, kind of get into it. I first want to say congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs and Taylor Swift. Um, I didn't get to see the end of the game because they had to go to a post-cabinet prime ministerial press conference, which I'll talk more about later. And while I was at the press conference, uh, they won, didn't they? In an overtime touchdown, the Kansas City Chiefs win. They make it two in the row. Thank God I didn't get to the TAB and put money on the San Francisco 49ers, but that is done. I'm going to have more about that press conference and what went down there later. But one of the things that was asked and mentioned of the Prime Minister was whether or not he uh, (coughs) saw the latest Curia poll, which showed a significant increase in support for the ACT Party at a time when they were being lambasted by our bent Uh, publicly funded uh, mainstream media for being racist and there were claims, of course, there was going to be a civil war at Waitangi and all was all very dark and everything. And what does David Seymour do? Well, he knocks the ball out of the park polling-wise. Gosh, since that poll came out, there's been all sorts of discussion. Um, It was nice to see ZB and the representative ZB pursuing basically a line of questioning based on what I told you, what I thought of the poll yesterday morning. But also there have been accusations that the poll is part of the Atlas Network, which is the new conspiracy theory for left-wingers. And I thought to have a look at that poll and maybe get some contacts, we might talk to the man who heads the company that took the poll and has been taking political polls for an awfully, awfully long time. From uh, Curia Market Research, we're joined by David uh, Farrer. David, how are you, mate? Good morning. Oh, we need to put you to air, don't we? Got him. Oh, have we? No, we got him now. Yeah, we got you now, David. Hello, Sorry, our bad. That was my now? that was my finger problem. <laughs> uh, David, firstly, um, I just want to clear this out of the way, and I always chuckle when I have to ask the question: Are you, or have you at any time been part of a thing called the Atlas Network? <laughs> um, well, individuals don't join, but look, oh, these conspiracy theories are hilarious. They're the equivalent of the World Economic Forum yeah. controls the world. But yeah. Atlas, who spent $75,000 last year in Asia Pacific and is credited with... 75000 yeah. That's going to buy a I lot know. of influence. Yeah. Um, cetera, they're a federation of centre-right think tanks. Yeah. Um, I set up Tax Fires Union, hadn't heard of Atlas at the time, that's not why it got set up, it got set up because I actually saw 100 press releases a day saying we need more spending and none saying less spending, yeah. um, but Atlas exists and they do training things, I've attended one of their meetings in Australia, etc, but where the conspiracy theories are hilarious is this notion that this body controls all the other bodies. Well, they the stopped the, the yes voice vote in <laughs> Australia, didn't they? According to Joanne, I mean, Meharangi Forbes, um, they stopped yeah. that. Well, actually, and what's even funnier about that is the organisation that was running the No campaign isn't a member of Atlas, but one of the organisations that is actually had a prominent spokesperson for the yes side. Um, uh, yeah, Atlas doesn't have any views on local issues. They're about, you know, they like classical liberalism, they like freedom. And it's, it's surprising that groups like Taxpayers Union and Initiative would join such a group, as it is surprising that Greenpeace would join the Climate Action Network. Because all sort of nutty left wing shillers like, like that guy Clint Smith and everything are saying, oh, this is now everything bad that happens is that to them, to the left, is Atlas. Well, it's Atlas now. It used to be around 30 years ago, they said it was Mont Pelerin Society. There always has to be someone. You can't yeah. just accept that, yo. Know, uh, if you take TU, for example, I'm no longer on the board, but when I was, 80% of the funding comes from small dollar donors who give an average of $67. Um, but people were convinced that the Coach Brothers must be somehow indirectly funding it. God. Um, David, look, let's get to, to why I want to talk to you. This poll that came out, and of course we say, oh, it's all Atlas, but it's not. It's just another political poll. Is it, when you look at other polls, is your poll reflective of or in line with the trends? Because I always like looking at polls, not on the raw numbers, but what trend is showing in public opinion? Well, it's a bit of a 
been bouncing around, but I think that's because polls are taken at different times. In a January poll, ACT were actually uh, quite low. That was beginning of January. But they had a very big surge from January to February. And you don't have to be a political scientist to work out. They were in the news nonstop because of people attacking their uh, treaty referendum idea. Now, whether or not that's popular is a different question. But for those who do want a change in the status quo over the treaty, um, they're the only ones out there saying, well, this is our solution. So it's not surprising that they had a boost. And in fact, I had a look at where it came from. Around one in 10 national voters and one in 10 New Zealand first voters in this poll said, uh, we're now supporting ACT. Now, National also did fine because a lot of people voted Labour at the election um, said they're now going to vote National. So, in fact, the big story is the centre-right went up to 72 seats on this poll, which is quite a huge safety margin. OK, and that is, I guess, it's always a, you always want to back a winner, don't you? That's a, that's a normal political phenomenon, is the incumbent government gets a bump because people want to feel like they belong to the winning side. Yeah, that's part of it, but it took a while for that to happen. In uh, November, December, even in polls, the country direction was still negative. Um, um, things hadn't moved much. I think there was you know, a huge outcry over certain things, the tobacco stuff at first. But then as things calmed down over the summer, yes, you've seen a bit more of that traditional honey work. Yeah. David, uh, someone's just texted me and said RNZ have done a poll on the treaty that shows Māori are in favour of a referendum on it. I can't verify that. But overall, I was surprised to read a report the other day suggesting that young people, or younger voters in particular, are quite keen on a referendum or to have their say on, on this issue. And it would appear that whilst the Prime Minister, to be frank, is sit, I think is sitting on the fence on this, not wanting to commit or get involved, Actually, despite mainstream media saying it's racist and white supremacist and David's a member of the Ku Klux Klan, it would appear that there is a mood in the country to address these issues. I think that's the key thing, is people want these issues addressed. There's been huge, shall we say, cultural and legal change in the last six years, and there's a lot of people who don't know where this is going, and a referendum might not be the best way necessarily of resolving it, but it's the only sort of way that's been put out there at the moment. New Zealand First does have a different policy about legislating, but we haven't seen details. So it's not going to go away. Um, what people think the treaty means yeah, that is totally different to 30 years ago. Now, that's not to say then was right or now is right, but it is constantly evolving. And who decides? Is it the judiciary? Is it the Waitangi Tribunal? Is it the public service? Is it the parliament? Is it the people? Is it um, the legacy media? It, 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 exactly. Who, who tend to have, have a fairly uh, one, one view only of it, which, of course, um, they had to to get PIJF funding. Mm. Um, so people do want a resolution to it. So I think the challenge for the government is if, the referendum isn't the way forward, is what's the alternative way forward? 